you know, make it seem that that would be an impossible thing for the horse to do. And in a similar way, I think it's an impossible thing for us to, at this point in time, certainly, uh, to explain the origin or the existence of the laws of physics. Um, we, they, they are something we discover we, through observation and measurement. We discover them. Um, some atheists who are stronger atheists than me claim that discovering that there are no gods is something a bit like that. But as I'm sure you're well aware, I'm very much an agnostic atheist. Um, I think I can rule out a lot of the claims which religious people make because it just doesn't make sense in light of what else I have learned about the universe. But um, there are some things I can't explain and it may be that there is some kind of supernatural creator behind the things which I don't know or don't understand. If you have, this is back to your message again, if you have no explanation then I assert here that it is much more than a mere case of I don't know, it goes beyond I don't know, you believe it. And if you have no rational basis for that belief then it is more accurately described this way, I have faith that, dot dot dot. Um, now here I would have to strongly disagree um, because you're basically saying that um, my belief is one of faith. Um, now, then we, we have to disentangle what is exactly is meant by faith. Um, when I read faith, I generally tend to think that it means uh, when you take something on faith, you believe it because you trust um, something you don't fully understand. Um, now, yeah, I am guilty of that to a certain degree, but um, what I would say regarding the laws of physics is that I do have a partial understanding, um, and I have the ability to refer to the work of people who are cleverer, smarter than me, um, and learn from them. And as I have done this um, over many years, I've never discovered... I've never found or uncovered a significant mistake that the uh, scientific community has made. Uh, in discussions with conspiracy theorists, one of the things I, I... I also get accused of having blind faith in um, the scientific consensus. Um, but I don't think that makes sense because the, the scientific method and the scientific consensus, I think, um, should be valued pretty highly because it has a track record of having been right a lot. And when the scientific community is not sure about something, they don't say they are. They admit where the edge of their understanding and knowledge is. And I think that's very important. So I don't think it's... I don't think it's accurate to, for you to say that I have faith in um, the things I believe, especially regarding the laws of physics and the universe. You put, I do not think I am guilty of hyperbole here when I note that if you are willing to say that the laws of physics incorporate everything, you are making this the linchpin of your position. Hence, I demand your accounting for the existence of these laws. I have to take issue with where you say you think that I think that the laws of physics incorporate everything. I would have to put a caveat in there and say everything physical that we know of. Um, and I would uh, also bring up the fact that uh, there are phenomena which have labels on them um, in the realm of astronomy such as dark energy and dark matter, and these are things we do not fully understand. They have, uh, to a certain degree, thrown a spanner in the works of previous understanding of the universe, but um, they have caused, uh, for one thing, the, the dark energy is the phenomenon which has enabled us since 1998 to know 
the age of the universe or to have um, narrowed it down to 13.7, 13.8 billion years. Um, I'll, I'm going to explore this in another message or video or what, however I do that because that, that, that brings up something else. Um, so no, I, there's, there's been a few times where you have summarized what I, what you think I have said or what you think I think and I don't think you have done it accurately. Now I'm quite, a, I'm, I'm well aware that there will be some things you have said which I have attempted to summarize and probably got wrong. Um, so there is always going to be a uh, an issue of uh, trying to communicate the message clearly. Um, we only have the English language, and that's not always the the best way to communicate. Um, well, it's the best we have, but I'm sure it would be possible to come up with a different language which worked better. Anyway. Um, Hence I demand your accounting for the existence of these laws. Um, well, I mean, you can demand away, but um, I don't think it's a justifiable demand, especially given that I admit right up front that I don't, there's an awful lot I don't know, and I would never claim to know, I'd ne I would never claim to be certain about something which I'm not. And this is something which I encounter a lot with believers is they do claim certainty about things which I do not understand how they could possibly be certain about them. Um, and it's not a simple case of two opposing points of view. Um, this is something I want to speak about in a future public video. Um, I'll briefly outline it here if I can. Um, the scientific community, the scientific consensus um, it's it's not based on opinion or geography or nationality or anything like that. You know, science is science. Scientists throughout the world can agree with each other. They can come up with the same conclusions independently, and, and the conclusions they have uh, can and are can be and are tested. Um, it's basically a systematic trial and error analysis of reality. When it comes to religion. There are ever so many um, people who promote religion who claim absolute certainty, but for every one that does that, it is possible to find another one, another person, um, who claims absolute certainty of the same or similar God, but there is something different. I mean, a, a case in point, and I'm jumping ahead to your more recent message, uh, trust in J.C. Laverne. Um, you uh, say you saw a video of his, um, I don't know which one, in which he was calling the Apostle Paul a false apostle. Um, I don't fully know your reasons for saying that the Apostle Paul is definitely not a false apostle, and whether there is such a thing as a false apostle, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, they could well all be false. They could all be deluded in some way. I don't know. Um, but Laverne's point, and it's something I do agree with, is that the Apostle Paul taught certain things, um, particularly regarding salvation, his salvation message, um, which is different from the uh, Apostle James, Peter, and Jesus himself. Um, although Paul claims to have got his message supernaturally from Jesus um, in Arabia, as far as I know, um, and this, here I'm, I'm actually going on not so much my own memory. I have read the Bible three times, but um, I don't have a perfect memory, so I'm going more on what I've heard from Laverne, because I've uh, watched a great number of his videos recently. Um, one of the things Jesus warned about according to him, is that there will be people who claim to have seen him, Jesus, um, in the desert um, or in other places, um, but beware they could well be false apostles. 
Um, and then along comes Paul with his road to Damascus experience. And Laverne's position, his opinion is that, um, yes, Paul may well have had an experience on the road to Damascus, but as far as he's concerned, it is less likely to have been Jesus, more likely to have been Satan. Which, I don't think I need to say, I don't think Satan is real either. Or any supernatural phenomenon. Anyway, I'm going to stop this, because I, I have no idea how long this is, is now. Um... And I've only done one paragraph in that message. I've basically covered what I covered in what I typed and lost. Um, there's more, but it, it takes me time to do this. So maybe I can tighten this up with a few edits, but um, I will see you, or speak to you, in another message. Okay? Cheers.